Lossless Scaling is a cool little third-party app from THS available on Steam, which allows you to upscale and more importantly, make it appear as though a game is running at a higher FPS than it actually is. Now, I think this was developed for pretty much any game out there, and on all the promotional material and things that THS has on Steam, they're showing games like Forza, Cyberpunk, and all those first-person shooter games and things. But I have to thank a user on my Discord uh, named Sharktacons for pointing me to a post over at Stenod Racing from Guitarzan, pointing out that you could use lossless scaling on old racing games to increase the F FPS, or make it seem like, at least, that the FPS has gone up. And this is quite an attractive thing to me. A lot of these old racing games from Grand Prix Legends to all the Papyrus games, NASCAR Racing, IndyCar Racing 2, all the old Cram and Sims, pretty much everything before the year 2000, I'd say, was almost always capped around 30 FPS. Grand Prix Legends was kind of the odd one out, with 36 FPS being the cap. But we were honestly lucky at the time to even get to 30 FPS. So the thoughts of 60 FPS or 120 FPS or all these crazy numbers we get these days uh, was unimaginable at the time. And I'll let the results speak for themselves. It really does look like the FPS has been doubled. And most importantly, it feels like it has as well. And this is this is great, not only for fluidity of gameplay and, and those types of things, but also just eye strain in general. Now, recording something like this is notoriously difficult because recording it is going to lose some of the clarity and things. And then rendering that video, uploading it to YouTube and getting it served back to you, it's just not going to look quite the same as it does locally but I bet you'll even be able to notice it in the video when it's side by side like this, and in person, it's much more dramatic. The way this app works in my layman understanding of it is it takes two frames and compares them to each other and tries to approximate what would be between those two frames. So if you're running at 30 FPS, it adds one frame in between every actual frame to make it look like 60 FPS. And it's the computer just with an algorithm trying to figure out what each pixel would do between those two frames. But the result of that is undeniable. Even though it's a fake frame, you would hardly notice that it wasn't actually a frame that was generated by the game and it just makes it look so much smoother. Now there's the obvious question about latency with something like this. If you've got something that's making fake frames in your game, are you going to have the same reaction times or when you move your steering wheel, will it actually translate to what's on screen in the same way? It's a very fair question and I think this does absolutely increase the latency a bit, but I've got a little clip here I'll show of me testing it on and off in Grand Prix Legends. And I don't know if it's because The Sims were such a low frame rate to begin with, Grand Prix Legends at 36 FPS here, but doubling that, I really don't notice the input lag. And you can tell on the video a little bit that when I shake the wheel, it does, it is a little less precise, but your brain is a magical thing. And I caught on to it right away. I don't, I don't feel like it is really delaying my reflexes. It doesn't feel like there's a massive input lag or anything like that, which is remarkable. Now I did want to point out because I know it'll be brought up that Grand Prix Legends has 60 FPS patches or plugins. But famously, these do not work with offline AI. They only work for online racing. And of course, a native 60 FPS is gonna be better than any sort of frame interpolation like lossless scaling is doing. But since the game itself is still running at the native 36 FPS, you can do all of the offline racing with all of the AI and it won't be broken, but it will just appear as though it's 60 FPS. You know, and it's not perfect. If you look closely, especially in the exterior views, you'll notice as maybe fence posts fly past in Grand Prix Legends or the crowd flickers by on some of the NASCAR games and things, that the algorithm itself gets a little confused. It starts glitching and, and showing artifacts, I guess I'd call them. You can notice it here specifically as the car rounds out of the source in Grand Prix Legends. Look at the helmet of the driver as it passes all of the billboards. There's a little bit of flickering there, but it's nothing too major though, and when I'm driving, I really don't notice it very much. You have to really look for it to notice it. Here's the app itself. There's quite a few settings that you can tweak on it, and I haven't, I haven't extensively tested everything, but I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, the mode itself is how you can change the frame rate generation, and I've been, I've been using it on 2X, which is double the frame rate, or, or tries to make it look like double the frame rate. You can go all the way up to 4X, and I did try that for a minute, so in Grand Prix Legends, that would boost it from 36 native all the way to 144, and uh, there's a lot more glitching and things definitely noticeable while you're driving, and I think there's a bit more of a system impact. But even at the 2X, which is just doubling the frame rate, 72 FPS 
for Grand Prix Legends. It's it's super noticeable. There's a couple different algorithms for it. Uh, I've been, been doing all the video and everything here on 2.3. And then there's the scaling type. I'm not really doing any scaling for Grand Prix Legends with this. I'm, I'm using native resolution and also DG Voodoo uh, to make it windowed mode. But uh, for, for games that run at a small resolution, you can actually upscale them to, to full screen. Um, importantly, I keep it on aspect ratio and you will notice for Grand Prix Legends, everybody's familiar with the menus being at a lower four by three resolution and the game itself being at the larger full screen. Uh, and so I would recommend up in settings, binding a key to turn this on and off and only turn it on when you're actually in either full screen mode for a replay or uh, driving. And it'll stop some craziness happening when you switch in and out of the, the menus and things. Uh, but other than that, I mean, there's a lot of different settings to play with and things. And uh, I'm sure the results could be improved for some games. But even on mostly default, it was, it was so quick to work and uh, very seamless and easy to use. And even on the games that are less sophisticated 3D, like some of the older NASCAR sims, I've been doing a lot of NASCAR Legends lately, obviously. And the result is extremely noticeable in it, and it makes it honestly hard to go back to the 30 FPS that these games natively run at. It's just so much smoother looking at the higher frame rate. And again, I really don't notice it in the wheel. These games are kind of imprecise in their controls to begin with, so it doesn't add much. And if, if it does, it's pretty easy to, to learn that little latency and adapt to it. But NASCAR Legends, even NASCAR 99, look really nice and much more smooth with it. Although there is quite a lot of that glitching in the replays. You can notice it when the cars cross the start finish line, some of that flickering, but maybe some of the settings can help sort that out. And I did try it all the way back to some of the DOS games. IndyCar Racing 2, of course, a favorite of mine, runs at 30 FPS natively. And uh, I don't know if there's enough data on the screen for it to really make an impact. It's definitely doing something, but I've noticed the frames themselves are actually a little more inconsistent with something like IndyCar 2. It'd be tough to tell from the footage, but like I said, it's notoriously difficult to record things like this. But with IndyCar 2, it does make it somewhat smoother, but I find that it's maybe a, uh, diminishing returns at that point when you're trying to do something that's such low resolution to begin with. It doesn't quite improve it as dramatically as some of these other games. Lossless Scaling is available on Steam, like I said, for a $6.99 US right now. And uh, I think even as a tech demo, if you've got a couple extra dollars, it's, it's worth checking out. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I will use it all the time, uh, but I definitely want to keep up on its development because it's early days for this. It's, it says it's version 2.11 that I'm using here today, but it's undoubtedly going to get better as things progress. And I'm always really interested in anything that makes some of these older games just feel a little more modern, allows us to experience them as they were intended. I think the gameplay uh, speaks for itself and it's a lot of fun. A little bit easier to look at now and coupled with all those upscaling techniques we already have with things like DG Voodoo, it'll hopefully make, make things maybe more palatable for some folks out there. So that's it, a quick overview on lossless scaling. If you've used it and you have any tips on how to make things maybe look or perform even better, let me know. I'm, I wanna keep tweaking with it and see what we can get out of these old games. Uh, but I think that's it for now. So until next time, this is GP Laps, and I'll see you all again later.